Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a new card that I got today. I know, a little bit behind the times, but it was time to get it. Jaleva, Nefalia's Scourge. So, let's get into it. Jaleva became available in Elite Packs today, or this week, I should say. And so I decided, as it was a card that I've been seeing a lot of people playing, but it wasn't a card that I had, that I'd go ahead and take a crack at the Elite Collection and get it myself. I was only missing two cards from the pack, and of course I picked up my Chaos first and Jaleva second. Just the nature of the beast. But if you're unfamiliar with Jaleva, Jaleva is a 13 mana 1-3 with flying and it has a stored mana of up to six. When this creature enters the battlefield, you're gonna move the top X cards from each player's library into your exile, where that X is gonna be the amount of mana used to cast this card, and all those cards that got moved to the exile are gonna gain the Darkness Emblem. That means that if Jaleva enters the battlefield without any stored mana, you're gonna be getting 26 cards to your exile, and then if you have the full 19 mana for Jaleva from the stored mana, then you're going to be getting 38 cards straight to your exile. It also has, when this creature attacks, you're going to pick one of the first four spell cards with a darkness emblem from your exile, fetch it, and give it full mana. So, I've been seeing a lot of Jaleva because, well, there's a number of combos that you can really run with this card, and there's really a specific core that if you run with this card, you can beat pretty much any deck in Standard. You can actually beat a lot of decks in Legacy with it as well. It's surprisingly powerful. And that is if we go ahead and we take Jaleva over here, which is going to be a tricolor creature, we pair it with Meeting of the Five, which is a spell that's going to fetch tricolor cards and give them full mana, and then finally, another card that I've never really used before, Unlicensed Hearse, which is going to give a creature you control a plus X plus X bonus until end of turn equal to the number of cards in Exiles. So the basis for the combo is you play a Jaleva. Jaleva is going to exile somewhere between 26 and 38 cards from both libraries. And then it's probably going to throw a meeting of the five into an exile, which you'll be able to get for free when Jaleva is going to attack, at which point you'll cast that meeting of the five, which is going to exile the full 38 cards because it will give the stored mana. And then with those full 38 cards getting exiled, you're probably going to get another meeting of the five. And so basically every time Jaleva attacks, you're going to get another meeting of the five, which is going to get you another Jaleva, which is going to get you another meeting of the five and it's going to ping pong back and forth uh, forever. Now, you are going to want to run this with a few other cards that have three colors, and this is where Lord Xander comes into play. As Xander is the same colors as Jaleva, you're going to see Xander in pretty much every Jaleva deck, because if you're just throwing a whole bunch of free meetings of the five, why not get rid of all the cards your opponent has, get yourself a bunch of loyalty, and make it so that if your opponent does wipe the board, that they're going to lose everything that they have too. So... This is going to make it even nastier. And then finally, once again, same colors. You throw a Maestro's Charm in, uh, and this is going to give you fetch. It's going to give you life gain, and it's also going to give you removal for vanguards and creatures in the form of damage. But nonetheless, I found that this one actually comes in way more handy than any of the other charms. And so with Meeting of the Five, and then Jaleva, Xander, and Maestro's Charm, you're going to do some pretty terrible things. And then of course, with the Unlicensed Terse, you're going to be getting an additional 38 cards into Exile at minimum per turn, which means that you're going to be giving whatever creature you assign Pilot 2 to from the Unlicensed Terse another 38 power every single turn when it attacks. Now that's not a summative power, it's not like they get 38 and then the following turn you add another 38 to that. Uh, it, it's really just, it's equal to the number of cards in the exile. Now, the deck that I'm running here uh, is actually a super streamlined deck. I wound up trying a few different decks as soon as I picked up Jaleva, and it really didn't take very much testing for me to realize why people like this card so much. It does, however, have a few weaknesses, so if you're watching this video and you're like, hey, I need to focus on getting Jaleva myself, uh, no, you don't necessarily need to focus on getting Jaleva. So, while Jaleva is able to go ahead and pull a bunch of free stuff, you do need to have good spells. And specifically, you're going to need Meeting of the Five if you want Jaleva to shine in Standard right now. So, 
If you don't have Meeting the Five, then you're really probably not going to like Jaleva as much. And if you don't have Unlicensed Hearse, you're going to like Jaleva even less. So if you really want to get the most out of this card, you're going to need to have more from its set. And if you do, you're going to find that this is one of the most powerful things in Standard right now. And it's going to be a long time until it rotates as well. So at the very least, if you do pick up Meeting of the Five, if you do pick up Unlicensed Hearse, then it is worth it for you to spend some resources to go ahead and pick up this card, because this will enable you to meet really any kind of objective you want. Creatures with power that are low that you need to cast, yep, that's going to be a check mark because you're going to cast a ton of Jalevas with Meeting of the Five. Creatures with power X or greater, yep, you're going to get that as well with, say, Xander. Uh, if you need to cast a whole bunch of spells, well, every meeting of the five is going to get you two spells because of the five and the charm. And then, of course, Jaleva is going to get you more spells. So this is really going to help you meet a heck of a lot of objectives that exist in the game. The Planeswalkers that I'm going to be running this with in this video are going to be the new Jaya, Fiery Negotiator. The more that I play with this Planeswalker, the more that I like her. I'm absolutely convinced that she's at least an S-tier Planeswalker. Uh, she's absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't picked her up for Crystals, then you definitely... Oh, sorry, if her um, in the Vault, you definitely want to make sure that you pick her up for Crystals. She is a Planeswalker. You're going to want to make sure that you have in your collection. And then the other Planeswalker that I tried it with was Kaya. Just because with the third ability, where you're going to take all graveyards and throw them into your opponent's exile, I thought, hey, maybe if I throw even more things into exile, it's going to make it so that the hearse is going to be even more powerful. But no, the hearse is powerful enough that you don't need this. But nonetheless, it wound up being incredibly strong. Uh, I was able to get my Jaleva to, or the hearse to buff my creature to like 170 some odd power, and it was just absolutely ridiculous. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. This first match is actually going to be up against a good friend of mine, Nabaldon. Nabaldon is in my coalition. I've been playing with him for years now. Years and years. So I wound up needing to go into the Legacy Training Grounds in order to test this card out because at the time that I pulled it, uh, Legacy Training Grounds was the only option. And it just so happened to be that I wound up running up against Nabaldon. And I actually know what deck Nabaldon is running at the time that I'm playing this as well. Uh, just because he was testing a deck for me with uh, with some new cards. So he was testing to see if Training Grounds and uh, the new multi-kicker artifact that gets mana uh, is, is going to go infinite, which it does not, thank goodness. But anywho, this is one of my very first matches with the Everflowing Chalice, that's what it's called. Uh, this is one of my very first matches with the deck. Uh, and so I wind up making a few little misplays. I do need to read some of the cards in here as I play just to make sure that I'm doing everything correctly. So uh, here I'm actually going to make a pretty big brain play. Instead of taking the red match, which is obviously the best for me, I'm actually going to go ahead and take the blue match because it's going to whittle down my opponent's shields and it's going to make it so that it's going to be a little bit harder for the Ashiok to get the Teferi to three or to eight shields to be able to use the minus three uh, because I very much do not want that to happen. That would be very much so bad news bears for me. So here I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use my first on uh, Maestro's Charm. I'm actually taking the Maestro's Charm just because I didn't think that I'd be able to cast the meeting of the five this turn. I didn't expect to get a five swap, uh, but nonetheless, this, this works out for me because this is going to get rid of my opponent's Teferi. So I don't need to worry about that anymore. I get a Xander down and I've already got a meeting of the five in my hand. Uh, and I also have the hearse as well. So that's gonna make it so that once I've got everything ready to go. At the very least, I'm going to have all my ducks in a row. And so I get a Jaleva here that's going to go ahead and exile 38 cards. I've got a Maestro's Charm, which I'm going to go ahead and use to fetch uh, another card. And so here I could take another Maestro's Charm. I could take a Xander. I could take a Kami War. The best play would have been for me to take the Maestro's Charm so that I could use Jaya's first again next turn and uh, be more likely to get uh, another Meeting of the Five. But, you know, whatever. So here I get to give pilot two to a creature and with the hearse, this is going to tell me which creature is going to become a big kid. So uh, there's nothing to buff here. So I'm gonna go ahead, exile two more cards from Ashiok. Um, but at the time uh, that I was playing this, I was actually really confused as to why it was that my monks did not get the boost. And so I'm looking for the hearse and now I'm reading it. Uh, and I'm reading that it specifies that I have to choose not to accept the prompt. So if I don't accept the prompt, then that's what's going to make my creature get thick as heck. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure not to accept the prompt this time. Now, you could argue that I make another misplay here in that I do not use my first ability 
uh, with Jaya, so I don't go ahead and pull potentially another Jaleva here, uh, which which would have been a, a big boy play, but uh, I did not have my big boy pants on here, so I did not do that. Um, I was focusing more on playing the control aspect with Xander, and so I'm just pointing out some of my early misplays, but you'll see that Xander's already at 62 power, uh, and so at this phase, I was already just absolutely in shock as to how quickly this really buffs up. Like, it just... You kill your opponent so quickly. Your opponent really has got, like, one one turn to answer to this. And if they don't answer to it in that one turn, then you win. So, Ashiok's out of cards. That means that this is definitely going to be a win here on this turn. I'm going to go ahead and properly use uh, my first ability this turn, I believe. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and fetch myself a meeting of the five. I will throw away the Maestro's Charm, though, just so that it doesn't wind up getting any of the mana from the conversion here. Uh, in case I do get any conversion, which I do. Uh, so this is going to be able to play two meetings of the five. I've got actually got a five swap here as well with the red as my kids are going nuts during their bath time. They love bath time. It's just sort of the way of being a kid, I think. But nonetheless, I'm going to get two Jalevas down here, which uh, is going to be good. I've actually got another meeting of the five that I can pull. So if I was able to cast that, that would be great. Uh, but I will be getting another, I think it's 76 cards into the exile here which means that Xander was already in the 60s, so should be in the 130s to 140s range here, uh, especially as I got more copies of Xander, so probably in the 140s, but that's definitely going to be enough to kill my opponent. There's nothing that Ashiok's going to be able to do. So this is against a, a, uh, a very amusing but definitely solid legacy deck, and uh, even up against this solid legacy deck, you'll see that we're at 139 power, and that's it. That's game over. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. For match number two... I had a much better hang of the deck, and then on top of that, I'm also in standard training grounds as well, instead of legacy, so it's really not nearly as scary, even though my opponent does start with a turn one mox, and I am up against Calamity, which is kind of scary on its own, but not so bad. So I've got a Teferi in my starting hand, and that's always a pretty big winner, and so just especially without there being, you know, a huge massive of gem conversion. I feel like putting the Teferi down first is just sort of a no-brainer. And so I've got a gem converter in my hand. I want to make sure that I'm not giving my opponent any really big mana swings either. And I would also ideally like to make it so that uh, they aren't able to activate their mocks as easily. So I'm going to freeze down my charm here just in case, uh, as I do see that Calumny is pretty close to a card in their hand just, just for mana. I get pretty lucky with my converter there, and I actually wind up getting a match. And then on top of that, I wind up getting a Jaleva. So I'm going to put Jaleva up in my hand. I definitely am going to want to go ahead and play that. I don't need multiple Xanders right now, uh, because once Jaleva gets down, hopefully I'm going, to start be, I'm going to start getting meetings of the five down as well. And then with those down, I'll be able to do some pretty terrible things to my opponent. So uh, I'm just looking at different matches matches and different match opportunities here. I could have taken the red match, but if I did that, uh, I'd be giving my opponent a white match. I didn't want to do that, especially as that white match would also give my opponent the mox match as well, and I did not want to give my opponent the mox match. So there, I, I took a match that even though my opponent was still going to get a good match, I was hoping that they wouldn't get a great match out of it. So uh, that was just my thinking behind that play. So my opponent still got that mox on the bottom. Uh, which is definitely where I'm going to want to be matching this turn, because I don't want to get rid of black gems if I can avoid it, but I do want to get rid of white gems. So I'm going to be playing a Jaleva here. I've got only 5 stored mana, so that's 18 for 36 cards into exile. Uh, but still, getting 36 cards into exiles can be pretty nasty. I get my hearse here as well, which is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and activate uh, my, my Kaya's third ability here, I think, as well. Just... Uh, might as well start dumping cards into uh, the exile from my opponent. There is a red into black match, which is really nifty. Uh, so that's going to get rid of a match for my opponent, and it's going to give me a match as well. And I like that. So I'm going to move the meeting of the five up. I'm actually going to wait one more turn, maybe, or, or just like one more swap here, because I wanted to get my Xander down before I used my third ability, just because Xander is going to dump cards into my opponent's graveyard. And so by dumping more cards into my opponent's graveyard, that's going to give me more to exile as well. So uh, this also means that my opponent has one turn here to uh, to stop me. And so if my opponent doesn't kill my my Xander here, which is the one that has pilot uh, on this turn, uh, this should be game over because I've already gotten 
uh, two Jalevas down, and so I'm using my third ability here as well. But with the two Jalevas down, that should mean that uh, there's enough cards in the exile that my opponent will not survive another turn. So uh, just just once Xander attacks, it should just be a one shot from Xander. So I get yet another Jaleva down. This is my third Jaleva. This one's going to be dumping another 38 cards into exile, and you'll see that Xander is already at 133 power. So that absolutely affirms that uh, this is Kalemni's last turn. So uh, my Kalemni's going to drop my Chaos, which is fine by me. Sundown Pass, which is fine. Void Rend. Uh, which is going to kill my Teferi, which is also just fine. Uh, and that means that this is definitely going to be a game over. I will be able to use uh, Kaya's third ability one more time. I'll be able to cast the Maestro's Charm from my hand. Uh, and then I'm going to get a hugely powerful Xander in the 170s, I think it is. Uh, if, if, you know, I'm A, remembering correctly, and B, if my, my math is, you know, somewhat accurate, which it usually is. It should be around the, the high 170s, I think. So we get yet another Jaleva down. We're going to get another Master's Charm down. We're going to get another Xander, uh, and that's going to be all she wrote for this match. So it's a really, really cool combo. I slept on this for way too long. I'm glad that I have it now. I would suggest that you get it, as this is uh, one of the two strongest cores in Standard. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.